Hi, everybody. Welcome to Bedtime Stories with Rabbi Mentz at Chabad of Bel Air. Each and every one of us had a long day. We were in our home. Some of us took a walk. But now it's time to go to sleep. And when we go to sleep, it's always good to have a nice bedtime story. But first, I would like to show you what I have at my bedroom. Things that you may want to have in your bedroom. I have a charity box. That's right. So every morning when I wake up, I can take a coin and put it into tzedakah, into charity, to start off my day with a good mitzvah. I can also, if I want, pray. I have a siddur. You see, as we get older, sometimes we want to pray to God. We know how to read. And we can go like this and say, Aleinu l'shabeyach l'adon akol. Or we can say, Adon olam Hashem alach. So many beautiful things we can do for, with a siddur. Another thing I have in my room is storybooks. I always have storybooks. And I love this one because there's hundreds and hundreds of stories. And the more I read, the smarter I get, and reading is fun. But do you know what I have by my bed before I go to sleep? Let me show you. I always have this. We call it Negevas. I fill it up with water, and then I say in the morning, when I wake up, the first thing I do is, I say, and When I finish that prayer, I pick it up and I wash my hands. Every night, this is what I put by my bed. In fact, I saw my mother and father do it too. Everybody does it. So beautiful. Anyway, that's the way the room looks. I want to tell you a story. Let me... This is a beautiful story. It's a story that goes back 2,000 years ago with the great Rabbi Akiva. Rabbi Akiva was one of the greatest rabbis we ever, ever had in the whole world. See, Rabbi Akiva used to travel from city to city and give Torah classes. And people would give him money so he can go to other cities and distribute the money to poor people. When Rabbi Akiva traveled, he would always travel with four things, mostly three but four, like a suitcase. But we're not going to count that. Everybody travels with a suitcase. But what did he put? He put into it his talus, his tefillin, some scroll books to learn Torah. But the three most important things he also had with him was a candle, a rooster, and a donkey. In those days, we didn't have wagons. To, we had donkeys to carry things around. A rooster, we didn't have alarm clocks. So he had a rooster to go, cock a doodle doo And he knew to wake up, to start his morning and say, I want to pray to God and thank him for another day and do mitzvah. And the candle was at night. When he wanted to learn Torah and there was no light, he would just light the candle, open up the scrolls, and he would learn. One day, on his travels, he came to a city and he knocked on the door. I said, can I come in? Please, my name is Rabbi Akiva. Do you have a guest room? No, we don't take in guests. Slam the door. Rabbi Akiva says, wow. He went to the next house. Can I come in? No, we don't take in guests. Rabbi Akiva said, maybe there's a hotel. So he went to the hotel and he knocked. I would like to stay at your hotel. Do you have room? No, we do not have room for you, Rabbi Akiva. They didn't know it was Rabbi Akiva, but he goes, I don't get it. I always have a place to stay. There's nowhere for me to stay. Why? And as he's walking out of the city, it's almost very dark. He goes and says, everything that happens, God knows. And God does it for a reason. And you know what? Kol ma'asha ovid ha'kadosh baruchu let to the yusi. All that God does is for the best. So if I don't have a place to sleep, it's okay. God knows. It's good. He finds a place on the side of the road when all of a sudden he goes with his high grass. 
He sets up a little camp and he gets dark. And what does he do? He takes his match and he goes, and lights the candle. And he opens up his mission and he goes, they must say, and he's starting to learn. When all of a sudden a wind comes, let me get my match. And he starts learning. And he's learning. When all of a sudden, Keeps on lighting and lighting it. And every time he lights on this calm night, a wind comes and blows out the candle. He goes, God, don't you want me to learn Torah? Why is the wind coming every time I light the candle? You know what, God? All that God does for the best. It's good. I have no candle. That means I have to get a good night's sleep. So he lies down, he goes to sleep. All of a sudden he wakes up a little bit in the night and he hears, ah, 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 ah. and he opens up an eye. And there he sees a coyote eating his rooster. And he goes, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, my alarm clock, my rooster. You know what? I'm not getting angry. Whatever happens, God knows. It's for the good. A little bit later, he goes to sleep and he hears a big noise. And there he sees his donkey running away as a couple of lions were chasing it to eat it. And he goes, I have no more donkey. I have no more rooster. I have no more candle. I'm not worried. I'm not complaining. Because I know everything that happens, God is in control. And whatever God does, it's for the best. Rabbi Kiva woke up the next morning prayed. He first, of course, washed his hands, Nagalasa. And then he said to him, he did his prayers, he put on his filling. Then he walked, carrying his stuff to the next town. When he came to the next town, the Jews saw him coming down the road and said, Rabbi Akiva, Rabbi Akiva, you're alive, you're alive. He says, of course I'm alive. He says, we were waiting for you, but we got scared. Maybe you wouldn't be alive. He says, why not? He said, last night, the pirates came to the other city and they took a lot of people as prisoners to sell as slaves and he goes ah oh, i see now why god didn't want me to sleep there i may have been taken as a slave and i see why the candle went out they didn't see me and the and the rooster it would have gone and they would have said there's a rooster there's a, there's a donkey they would have made noise and they would have caught me god was protecting me Yes, all that God does is always for the best. So you see, children, sometimes you go and say like this, this may not be a good thing, thing. this may not be a good thing happening. Uh -uh. God is with you. God knows exactly what's happening. And it will turn out for the best. So tonight when you go to sleep, don't worry. God is with you. And he'll watch over you. Because everything that happens, we Jews always say, it's always for the best. Now it's time to go to sleep and to say those beautiful prayers that God should watch over us and take care of us until tomorrow. So everybody take your right hand and put it over your eyes and say after me, Shema. Yisrael Adinoi Eloheinu Adonai Echad Say the next few words Baruch Shem Kivod Malchuso Li'olam Va'ed there's a little paragraph that some of the older children may know. Let's sing it together. I want to hear you. Vishinam tam lebanecha bidibarta bom. 
שבטר חבן וישחך ובלכתך ודרך ובשך בך ובקומך וקשרתם לאוס על ידך והיו לטוטפוס בין עיניך וכסבתו מר מזוז אז בישחך ובשעורך children you just ask God to watch over you and you just told God how much you love him that you can't wait for tomorrow to wake up to do the mitzvah and be a good boy and serve Hashem and be nice to your parents so now it's time to say good night to everybody in my home this is the way we always did it so let's do it together I always say the word good tonight good tonight means good night I would look at my brothers and say, Gute Nacht, brothers. Gute Nacht, sisters. Gute Nacht, my parents. I love you, mommy. I love you, daddy. Oh, and I love you, God. Good tonight, God. See you tomorrow. When tomorrow I'll wake up and be a new person and be a happy person to serve you, God, and make my mommy and daddy happy. <sighs> Good night. <laughs>